Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sapphire. And if you're not new here, hey y'all. Either way, hey y'all. So I wanted to talk, well, I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about how it's certain people in the churches that chase other believers away, okay? So we've all been in the world and we've all committed sin because nobody is perfect. People seem to think that one sin is greater than another one, especially for people who who are no longer living in their sin and for people who are still living in their sin. And when I say living in your sin, I mean the things that are keeping you away from God, kind of like, you know, strongholds, things that stop you from wanting to seek God. You know what I mean? So basically, let me tell you, a stronghold can be caused by, say you go to church right and you um um one of the members or anything they offend you right and they talk about you or treat you bad or something like that and then you stop going to church because whatever they um whatever they said to you has affected you they said it and it went to your heart and so now it's keeping you away from god that's a stronghold okay so that's that can be considered a sin, okay? So you, you're not supposed to let anybody affect you to the point where it's keeping you from getting to God. And that's, you know, that's a big thing these days in churches because when you come to church, people, first of all, everybody in your business, right? Everybody want to know, um, you know, where are you from and this and that. And it's kind of hard because... It makes you not want to go because you know people are like that, right? But then it comes to a point where you, you know, you just coming in, you don't really know, and you telling people you know your business, and it's going to be some people there, you know, who don't mean any good, and it's a certain spirit that they have within them that's causing them to be that way. It don't have nothing to do with you or what your, you know, what your current um situation is it's all about their reflecting their insecurities onto you and yes people do that you know in church nobody's perfect and just because people go to church don't mean that they you know have the right spirit within them so basically what churches is where believers go to get a healing where the believers go to hear the word where the believers go to you know get closer to god so just because somebody has been there longer than you or they seem to know something more than what you do, it doesn't make them holier than thou, okay? When you go to a church, you have to learn to be there because God wants you there, not because of the, you know, people. You're going to find the people or the people, you're going to realize the people who are really there to, you know, have fellowship with you and to really love on you like a church family you're gonna find those people but you and then you're gonna notice the people who who have their own insecurities right and they're going to kind of like um rub you the wrong way and when that happens you just know to keep your distance from them and that don't mean treat them bad or nothing you still be kind to them but you already know what they're about right so you don't let people chase you away from church now, I do want to say this. If it's the pastor, then get up out of there. You'll be able to tell in your heart, like, especially if you have a relationship with God, you, you'll be able to um, separate the wheat from the tear, okay? Because God will show you how to do that. And once people see that you really have a relationship with God, they'll start treating you different anyway. So then that's when you know to get up out of there, okay? It's important to still go to church because God might have you go to church just to hear, you know, what they have to say because it's going to minister to you, right? Don't let people chase you away. We all have the opportunity to be saved. And God didn't say that your anybody's salvation is higher than the next person because we are all saved through faith and believing in, you know, Christ Jesus and how he died on the cross. To save us from our sins so nobody is exempt and nobody is higher than the other i want to say a little backstory for y'all so y'all can see 
power, faith through Christ Jesus. In the Bible, it speaks of a lineage of people and how Abraham, he followed, you know, God's laws and precepts and things like that. And then as the generation started to go, you know, forward, the laws and the precepts started to fall off and people stopped following God's laws, right? So then that's when God, that's when he got mad and he decided that he was going to destroy the earth, right? So he destroyed the earth the first time and that was Noah's Ark. And then he, he allowed the earth to be, you know, start again. And he said that he wasn't going to destroy the earth again with water. The earth started over. People started to do things again, like Sodom and Gomorrah. People started to commit sins that was detestable in God's eyes. Like, he was just like, no, like, it ain't, you know, some of the things they wanted no coming back from, okay? And they didn't care. They didn't acknowledge God at all. So, he, um... He was like, the only way he can do it is if he basically come down here on his own and he fix it by himself. So that's when he sent Jesus down here, which is God. He sent himself down here. He came down here himself, okay? And he, um, he established the laws back into the earth. He was killed for going against the grain, going against what everybody else believed in. And they didn't want to conform to any type of law that wasn't something that they were used to. Jesus died so then we can be free from our sins because he knew that nobody was going to believe it anyway, right? So he came down so that the people who do decide to believe in him can be saved. And the people who don't, then, you know, they're just not going to be saved. So he sacrificed himself for the people who who will love him, who will accept him, you know? So it's not about who knows more or who doesn't know more. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe that he died on the cross for our sins, then, you know, no, you're not saved. So what I want to do today, y'all, first of all, I want to read y'all something so then you can see that it says in the Bible that all you have to do is believe that you know jesus died on the cross and he rose again you know that's all you have to do is believe that and you are saved and just if you do something or if you're not perfect your salvation is not taken away you get convicted when you commit a sin because you know it's wrong right and it's up to you to know what type of relationship that you have with god to repent like instead of repenting us, you know, as humans, we hide. Like, um, you know, Adam and Eve in the garden, when they got deceived by the serpent and they ate the fruit, and all of a sudden they knew they was naked because they realized that they committed a sin. So they hid from God, and they heard when they heard him coming, they hid from him. And God said, who told you that you was naked? Who told you that you committed a sin? So we convict ourselves when we commit a sin. We don't have to run from God, okay? So that's what I'm saying. Like in churches, people make it seem like that just because we're not perfect or just because we committed a sin or something like that, that we can't be saved anymore or that God doesn't still, you know, give us salvation. If we still believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that we can be free, and um, be children of God, then we're still saved. So let me read this in the Bible for y'all real quick, y'all. Let me find. I had to write it down. So it's Romans 10, 10 and 11. Okay? Okay, y'all. So I got it. So Romans 10, 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 10 says, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. So basically, it says that because you believe that Christ died on the cross for your sins, you will never be put to shame. 
we put ourselves to shame because we know that we committed a sin. But Jesus already died on the cross for our sins. And that's what, you know, people don't emphasize enough. If he if he's already died because he knew we was going to commit sin, then we are we are still saved. All we have to do is admit that we believe in him. You know what I mean? So, again, I'm going to stress it that just because you you committed a sin and just because you messed up doesn't mean that your salvation is taken away. And that's where, you know, they don't speak about that enough in the church because I'm sorry to say it's so many people in there who judging each other because of their own sin, you know? So it's like once you get healed, you back to sinning again because, you you know, it's like it's a judgmental cycle. Like nobody's sin is better than the other person. You can't conv- convict somebody else because, you know, what they're doing or what they're not doing. So Jesus going to love you. He will, he'll never leave you nor forsake you, right? However, it's on you. If you keep on committing the sin and something happens to you, it's your fault because you've been saved through Jesus Christ so that you don't have, you know what your sin is and you don't, you won't commit the sin anymore. Now, if you keep on doing it, that's on you. God loves us so much that he wants us to live under his, you know, his house, his rules. You build a relationship with God, right? And you follow his commandments. That's that's the start of following God's rules, okay? So start there and everything else will fall into place. Seek the kingdom of God and all else shall be added on to you. That's all you have to do. It seems like that us, you know, as a people or whatever, we get chased away because we feel like that it's too hard to have a relationship. It's too hard to know God. So then people walk away because they don't want to be judged. When in all reality, we're really judging ourselves because it doesn't matter what nobody else thinks of us. All that matters is what God thinks, okay? You want to be saved and you, again, and you want to, you know, build, rebuild your relationship with God. I have a prayer for you to say. Dear Heavenly Father, I repent for my sins, Lord God. I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, if you repeat it after me, you are now saved and you are a child of God. So I have an action step for y'all. And I have a scripture for y'all to read, okay? This is your homework. So, it is Ephesians verse 2. Read the whole verse. I, I want to read it with y'all and go over it, but that's going to be too much. So, pause the video right here and go read it. And after you read it, comment down below, I am saved. If you ever need to talk about anything or you ever have anything to say or a question or anything... You can always email me. My email is under my bio on my um, on my page. And yeah, y'all, that's all I got. And I want to tell y'all that I love y'all. And I hope y'all are having a great day. And don't let anybody be the reason that you don't have a relationship with God. Start to build your relationship with God, okay? It's really important that you do these things if you want to have any type of life because God is He's the building block of everything, okay? If you're tired of the life you're living, you need to become closer to God so you can see who He's, who, who you are in Him, okay? And that's when your life will be, begin, okay? And I'm sorry, y'all, my mouth like, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, okay, so I love y'all. 